In 10 years we've come a long way from just a few voluntary members all the way through to over 4,100 members in, in our last count. We are an economic hub. People don't realise how important the area is. The property values alone are worth $2.5 billion. The last 10 years have been crucial to us and the next 10 years will be too. Prior to setting up in 2003, uh, there, was, there was no organisation of any kind that I'm aware of in the area. The whole area was going through burglary, so we decided to get it together as a group. And there was about four or five of us uh, that we managed to, who were suffering the same problems. And uh, we got together and formed the, the, the business association to give us a voice, a one voice to uh, have a bit of power to make things happen because quite simply it was, it was just out of control. When I see how we started, which was, um, which was a group of individuals coming together because their business of a bit were being affected by crime, um, to what it is today, we've achieved a lot. A key facet of our success has been the fact that we have a local focus. But that's the essence of who we are. We know what the local issues are. We know how they impact on our local business owners and our property owners. I think the most important thing we do is represent members' interests through key relationships with you know, stakeholders who can really make a, business, a, a difference to the members' business operations. The real change for our organisation came five years ago when we became a business improvement district. By becoming a business improvement district, not only did it make us more accountable to our members because they were funding us, but it also gave us that economic base from which we could build a series of programmes that had direct benefit to that local business community. The Crime Is Not OK project is definitely seen as beneficial to our members. The project is designed to support our members by supplying them with practical resources such as the toolkit, offering them training opportunities in such topics as shoplifting and internal fraud. It I also undertake as part of the project and SIPTEDS, which is through crime prevention through environmental design. So that's looking at the layout of a building and so forth to help them not become victims in the future. Crime is definitely seen as less of an issue than it was 10 years ago for our members. One of the most effective initiatives we've introduced are the real-time cameras that we've put up all over the industrial estate, which allows people to see what's actively happening on the ground at that any one time. In order to reduce congestion, we've looked at people in using public transport, we've promoted a carpooling scheme, and we also encourage people to cycle or walk. And there are a whole load of new cycle lanes that have been put up around the area as well. One of the ways we can help our members is to help them resolve issues around access, congestion, even freight problems. They come to us and we've got the right connections at Auckland Transport to try and get those issues resolved. I think our, our programme development it has been innovative, but we are continuously looking to fine tune that and find areas where we can add real value, whether it's events such as our expo, whether it's after fives, whether it's a, a breakfast speakers, our new business um, capability program, which is about educating our owners and operators in the area to try and grow and, and um, strengthen their businesses. The other significant change within our environment over the last couple of years has been the advent of the super city. In 2010, the political environment changed forever. It just made the, the need for a local voice, a strong voice, a relevant voice, that much more important. We, we can actually advance and, and promote and advocate on behalf of individual or groups of members on certain issues, which gives us you know, a huge advantage over an individual standing alone uh, when dealing with those long-term issues. Over the last two years, a lot of our focus has been around going back to our members and conducting two ballots. The first was in 2012, we went to our existing NHBA members and said, would you like us to continue? 74% said yes, so that was fantastic. But we knew that the businesses on the adjoining commercial area, on the other side of the motorway, were suffering from the same issues. So earlier in 2013, we invited them to join NHBA and we're delighted that they are now part of one of the largest business improvement districts in New Zealand. Thinking back over the 10 years, I think it's been a fantastic journey. I have to say we're incredibly proud of what's been achieved. You know, I think the level of engagement we have with our membership is you know, be second to none, I would suggest, in New Zealand. Hopefully what we do is, is relevant, adds value, and is going to be um, a very good foundation for the long term for you know, you know, the next 10 years plus.